Watch your, keep, watch your forward mm -hmm. trip on. Kind of move to the back. Move the hand, you got it. She's getting on and off the boat. Huh. So kind of move to the back. Okay. So one thing you'll notice is we've got all these seats inside that on these rails. We can take these tracks out and we can put equipment racks in there for, for various types of equipment. Um, this device here actually helps maintain the pressure inside because it, it's constantly breathing. There's lots of different reasons for that change in temperature and pressure, so this, this helps us with that. It's single piloted right here. One thing unique about this, you see there's no yoke or a stick or anything. To make the thing go up and down, you've got these wheelchair type things, so you push them down or push them up. Oh, wow. You've got rudder pedals for left and right. Other than that, this is all pretty much conventional of um, the twin aircraft. A twin engine aircraft. The big difference is the, is the valve control system. This is how we control the pressure in, in, the, in the bag, which is extremely important. We've got a bag within a bag. There, there's a bag inside that has air in it called the ballonet, and that is like the rubber band for the expansion and contraction of the helium. So we've got a fixed volume, and the gas is moving, so the, we're constantly putting air in or out of the ballonet. That's what this helps do on the ground. But we also have valves to um, if we get too light, the problem with an airship is you burn all your gas off, you keep getting lighter and lighter, and you take it down. So we can actually release some of the helium so we can come back down. So that's the biggest difference you'll see right here. Other than that, it's, it's pretty much standard stuff. Uh, are you pilots uh, Navy folks? Or are they uh, contractors? No, uh, our main pilots are contractors right now. Mm -hmm. Commercial, um, commercial blimp pilots with thousands and thousands of hours. I'm actually in training, <laughs> so I, I expect to uh, get my rating fairly soon. How many people are in training to uh, eventually pilot? This? Right now, it's just me. Just you. What's, what's your own uh, uh, flying background before this? Um, I'm a private pilot, but I also went through the Naval Test Pilot School and mm -hmm. flight test, uh, uh, flight testing marine helicopters for like 15 years yeah. as a as a backseater type of person. Mm -hmm. That's why I really like this because I'm really a mission systems person, and I can put lots of stuff on here, and we can test lots of stuff on. It. That's what really attracted me to the airships. How involved is flying one of these as compared to a, a conventional airplane? This airship is all cables and pulleys, so there's no mechan uh, no hydraulic boost. So after a while, it can get very fatiguing. Because when you push that, that pedal, you're essentially pushing a barn door at the back, and that's with your foot. There's some mechanical advantage, but other than that, it's, your, it's you. So if there's lots of uh, turbulence and you're working really hard, it can be relatively fatiguing. So even though it's single pilot, we like to fly with two pilots, an hour on, an hour off, so everyone stays fresh throughout the mission. Because the typical mission for us is about six hours. Like I said this ship can stay up for 24 hours if we rig it correctly and have enough people on board. But a typical mission is six. The longest I've personally been, not this ship, but a ship like this is 14 hours. Me and two guys, 14 hours, and that turns out to be long. The, um, the wheels, what are they, the, what are they called? The, uh, the, 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 the called the elevator wheels. Elevator wheels, that's right. That controls the pitch. Also, you see we have a little sight hole here. We can look up into the ballonet, and, and if you, it's hard to see, but there's little lines on there, and I can tell how big the ballonet is before we go flying. That's another thing that's kind of different. Are there uh, any kind of? I mean, I'm assuming this has electronic navigation systems, all that. We have a GPS system right here that we use, mm -hmm. but it's not hooked to the flight controls. That back panel comes out, we can act, actually, the blue thing, mm -hmm. it comes out and we can access back there's the fuel tank and also it's called the air box. Just a big box and, and uh, we got fans to push air into the box or a valve that opens to, to let, let the air out, depending on what the ballonet is doing. So if we have an emergency flight, we can go back there and tend to some different things. Also under that seat right there is a bunch of ballast bags. If we get in trouble, we also have ballast bags up here typically. So if we're in flight and we get in trouble, we can take these bags, we cut them up with a razor blade, and we drop the pellets out. If we're too heavy, you know, like you know, in a balloon, yeah. you drop sand. Well, we have ballast, so that, that's another one of our safety. How uh, how heavy are those ballast bags combined with? Twenty five pounds each. Twenty five pounds each. How many does it carry? It depends on on what we need for that particular flight. Okay. You know, in an airship. Um, yeah. Something really unique is we can be heavy, we can be at equilibrium or we can be light. 
most other aircraft don't do that. It's like, kind of like a submarine. Yeah. So if we take off heavy, and say we take off 200 pounds heavy, and we burn 200 pounds of fuel, then we'll be light. You know, we won't sink and we won't climb. Say we burn 300 pounds of fuel, then we're going to start climbing. So there's a lot of calculations we do before flight. How long we're going to fly, how much fuel we're going to burn, how heavy do we want to be at takeoff. So just before we take off, the last thing they do is they ballast us. They'll, what they'll do in the, in the it's called a weigh-off procedure. They'll take the airship and they'll they'll put bags on or off until we're right at equilibrium. We're not climbing or falling just before we fly. They don't care what we weigh. They just want us at equilibrium. And the pilot says, "Okay, I'm going to fly for six hours. I'm going to burn 300 pounds of fuel. So I need 300 pounds of weight on board." Okay. So in addition to that, say I want to I want I like to be a little heavy when I land. So. Before we take off, they'll put 350 pounds of weight on board. So we'll take off heavy 350 pounds. And if everything works out well, we'll burn 300 pounds of fuel during that mission. We come back, we'll be 50 pounds heavy, which brings us down nice and easy. You said that maintenance is going to be done um, a lot throughout the country, but the heavy maintenance will be done here. Um, our crews throughout the country, did, are they prepared to work with uh, this, this is kind our of crew right here? It's okay. not, like a carnival act. Oh, We've okay. Got trailers the and vans. And oh. this, the, 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 the crew is, is highly trained. Uh, they you know go through all the Navy standards for training mm -hmm. and um, safety That's and excellent. special equipment and all that stuff. We don't run around just picking up. It, so it's the same. Alien and airship is a very specialized uh, skill. Okay. And are those crew contractors or Navy? Correct. They're all contractors. Same company that has that buys the pilots, of course. And how much fuel does this hold at uh, max? This will hold 240 gallons of fuel. Now you said the maximum altitude is about 10,000 10, feet. What's, what's, the, what's the typical altitude? That typical, you we're anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000. you got to remember, airships were, the modern airships were designed to do one thing, low altitude advertising. So this airship was designed for low altitude work, not really high altitude work. You can make airships that can have high altitude work, but you have to change the configuration of it. What's that, a GoPro? <laughs> Sorry, what? In fact, that the ballonet, remember that the balloon within the balloon? Right. That's actually a, a performance characteristic of the blimp. Our blimp has about, if you look at the total volume of the, the envelope, one-fourth of that, 25% of that is ballonet, if the ballonet is completely full. That gets us to 10,000 feet. If you wanted to go to 20,000 feet, half of the balloon would be air and half would be helium. Because by the time you get to 20,000 feet, the helium expands and expands and it pushes all that air out. So the, the ballonet is really um, a performance characteristic. And our climb and our descent rate is determined by how fast we can get air into or out of that ballonet. If we're climbing and the gas is expanding and we can't deflate the ballonet fast enough, we get an overpressure. And we'll either overstress the hull or we got a vent or something like that. On the way down, if we can't get gas in quick enough, the, the bag will go limp and the cables go slack and we lose control. So there's a very fine, fine pressure point to try to keep right there. Just, uh, I mean, tell us what, what the dimensions are here because you can kind of see it, but just physically, what uh, what's the width of where you're standing right now? On side of the gondola? Yeah. It's about uh, five feet. And I think we have a spec sheet on the length and width of the airship. Any other questions? I think I'm good. I do it? Pardon?